Hello everyone and welcome back to our Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with the Bopper again which is still suborbital on one side of its orbit and trying to bring its orbit down while scanning the surface of Mars. We don't want to use any more fuel to bring the orbit down because it turns out that we don't have any electric charge in the upper core and without electric charge obviously you can't do anything. I mistakenly remove the electric charge that normally comes with this core while fueling it up. So we're going to need to land this whole thing down on the surface of Mars. It doesn't have a whole lot of electric charge to begin with, in fact, uh, so this is critically flawed in some ways, uh, but we're going to bring it all down and then hopefully use the fuel that we have to slow its descent. So that's why we need to hang on to what fuel we have. Um, yep, that's basically the size of it. So. We're going to continue scanning while bringing our orbit down. We've done 10% of the altimetry scan. We need 95%. We are in a highly inclined orbit, polar orbit, in order to do that scanning. And every pass, we'll also be going into the atmosphere to bring our orbit down. Let me do some more of that uh, until we get to our next alarm. Boop, 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 boop. I think I've, uh, I've got my contracts back, so at least we've solved that problem temporarily. Uh, there may be other problems, but um, uh, I can keep scanning for three days, and then we have to turn to the next mission coming in. Uh, and of course, that's pretty critical, because we've got all these contracts to fulfill, and uh, the Phobos ones are the ones that really, really need to be done, because we've got uh, plenty of contracts, uh, d data from space around Phobos, surface of Phobos, and then also a landing on Phobos, uncrewed Phobos landing. So those things absolutely need to be done for the future of our space agency. And, and then we also have to make the correction to this Jupiter orbiter for its mission. Okay, so lots to do. Let me uh, continue the scanning for the next three days. Okay, well, uh, we've brought our orbit down to five hours and 55 minutes in the past three days. I didn't lower the periapsis. We could have probably brought our orbital period a little bit tighter uh, if I had lowered the periapsis a little bit more, but better to be safe than sorry. At this point, we probably need to turn to this Phobos mission in order to do its corrections. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be the safest thing to do. Oh, hold on, there's a little bit of pause. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this probably could do a few more orbits in order to lower that. So far, we've scanned 24% of Mars's surface. We need to do a lot more of that, and we need to get that apoapsis down to below 400 kilometers for that. Otherwise, if you take a look at uh, ScanSat here, oop, that's not very good. There we go. Uh, you can see that we're only getting the southern part. We're not getting the northern part because that's where our apoapsis is, and so we're not close enough to scan the northern part. So. Yeah, this needs to pass through the atmosphere a few times. So far, no damage at all from that procedure, so no problems there. Okay, to the Phobos mission. Okay, we're all set up with this probe now. We uh, got a good tangency with the orbit of Phobos, and we have a maneuver in one and a half days to get into orbit, and also to flatten our orbit out with respect to Phobos so that we don't have any extra inclination. Right now, we're inclined by 10 degrees. Uh, we don't have an encounter yet, but we'll do this first, and it'll cost 2,589.6 meters per second. So let's add that alarm, and uh, I'll be spending a little bit more time bringing our other probe down, once again, trying to get it to a good scanning altitude, and then we'll do this burn. Well, taking a look at our approach, obviously this is not good enough. We are approaching too far south. So let's see if we, not prograde, uh, do a normal burn to lift that up a bit. Flatten that out more. Probably we'll have to do more at Phobos's orbit itself. And then uh, we want radial in. In this case, you don't want to do prograde, you want to do radial. That looks like a pretty good match right there. So here, uh, again, since we're not aero braking, it'd be better to just try and match, his, match Phobos' orbit right away rather than going too low and then having to lift that back up again. This engine isn't activated yet. Let's see how much delta V we are talking about on this stage. 
Ah, well, it'll take six minutes to activate the engine. Uh, that should be locked up. Yep, everything else is locked. Okay, so here we are once again with the Phobos probe now approaching the maneuver node. I've done some of the aero braking with the bopper, and so it is now in a lower orbit, but still not low enough. So it still needs to pass through the atmosphere of Mars a few more times. I actually have no idea how many times I've passed through the atmosphere of Mars with it so far. Quite a lot, quite, quite a lot of times. So it's just uh, being very careful and slowly doing that. But in this case, we don't uh, pass through the atmosphere of Mars at all. We are merely going to use our Delta V. So um, we will pretend that I've set the signal to do this kind of burn. Uh, but uh, actually, I don't have to wait for signal delay to do a burn at all. We've got our RCS on. We'll use Smart ESS to orient and the RCS will be able to sell the fuel down and will ignite our engine. The actual time of the burn means that we should start mm, somewhere about now would be good. Okay, so node. Not that Smart ASS is particularly good at holding things at nodes, but hopefully the gimbling of the engine will help. Hopefully. It's not as happy with the RCS. Yeah, this is, this is not very helpful. We do have to correct the inclination a bit, and it really needs to aim at that thing. Well, we're coming close to the end of the burn. I tried to sell it down, but every time I try and get it just to the maneuver node and to get it to stick there, it still wiggles. So, yeah, not much luck on that score. And now we're getting into the maneuver node wandering bit. Let's just turn off Smart ASS and I'll try and just settle it down here. Oops, I lost a target. Let's just shut it off for now. Let's see, we are in orbit and we don't strictly need the maneuver node right now. It barely wants to admit it, but there's something there. There we go. Alright, so we'll do that burn in 20 hours. Add that in. Our other Phobos mission is still on its way. We might not need it to do Phobos. We might just have it hang out and uh, wait for another opportunity for a different contract. Uh, for now, we'll just focus on this. Of course, I am now going to go back to our bopper, which is um, actually that one there. As you can see the polar orbit and all. And uh, we will continue to try and bring that apoapsis down until it's time for this maneuver in 20 hours. All right, here we go for the Phobos rendezvous burn with this particular probe. I'm being very, very patient with these Mars missions. No solving the problems that uh, occurred in building the Mars missions, but uh, at this point I would like to get as much done as possible as far as our contracts are concerned. And uh, we've scanned 38% of the Mars surface so far, so well on our way to doing that. Uh, that probe is currently at an apoapsis of 800 kilometers now, with a periapsis of 100 kilometers. And so still in aero braking mode, trying to get below 500 kilometers on the apoapsis. And um, here, of course, this is supposed to get the science data from space around Phobos and land on Phobos and do all those things. Um, it looks like it has enough juice. I mean, when you take a look at it, we've got 1,152 in this stage. Then we've got the go-around stage. Uh, that's supposed to get into orbit around Phobos. And then the lander stage. It's not like we need a lot of Delta V to, to do things around Phobos. Um, yeah, this is, this is very well suited already. I mean, we are overpowered for Phobos, basically, is what I'm saying. And then there's the other mission. That mission was on a more powerful rocket and is even more overpowered for Phobos. So we're in a good position altogether. Our relative velocity with respect to Phobos shouldn't be too high once we get there, so it shouldn't be hard to get into orbit around it. Well, hotter than usual because it's so finicky, you know, I mean, it's a matter of a few meters per second only to between uh, getting into orbit and going on escape. Okay, uh, well, it's sort of an encounter. 
add SOI change. Okay, eight hours it's almost saying. So we'll take that and I'll continue to bring the, the bopper mission down. All right, so we finally got the bopper into a proper orbit now for scanning. As you can see, we've got uh, ScanSat here and it is scanning the northern hemisphere properly now because it's under an apoapsis of 500 kilometers. We've boosted the periapsis to 150 using RCS, so it's safe now. And uh, we have covered 48% of Mars with our scan, so it should be done pretty quickly. Um, by the time that one comes in, probably it'll be ready to descend, but we won't do that in a hurry. We'll be patient about it. After all, we've got this problem where there's no electric charge up there, so the whole thing will have to be landed all together. That's a tricky business. Anyway, uh, with this all situated, let's take care of actually landing on Phobos. Here we go into Phobos SOI. We seem to have communication going that away, so it won't be blocked by Mars anytime soon, though we still need to be careful not to have it blocked by Phobos itself. There's the rock. We are currently 60 kilometers away, still not in SOI. And that is the alarm. All right, here we go. And come on, come on, Phobos encounter. E Okay, there we go. Um, that's rather closer than I thought it would be. That's only in four minutes. Okay. Well, let's start getting to work here. Not too much delta V to work uh, to burn off. We're still with this stage. Um, we didn't even need that stage there about overkill but you never know probably should do some science let's log some magnetometer data I mean well science in a few minutes let's put it that way um, like that I guess it'll be good to have uh, this communication relay here it could help with uh, future Phobos missions and maybe we could like I think anything you do on Phobos can't really be called colonization per se. Oops, game paused a bit. But we could build a base here, that's for sure. Tough to anchor it down. This is in anticipation for using this as a relay. Of course, it wouldn't be a relay all the way back to Earth because this section doesn't have antennae of that range. Well, no, actually those are pretty good, aren't they? Those are uh, three gigameters. This one's only four. So maybe they'll work. And that'll do, I think, a little bit more. Okay. 10.9 uh, by 9.9. .9. Sounds good. Let me just kill... okay, uh, killing rotation does a little bit more than I would like. Okay. No longer 10.9 by 9.9 .9 at all. But why don't we wait until orders are executed before we proceed? Well, we've apparently done high with Phobos. Yep. Uh, we need to transmit something though, right? Yeah, transmitter recovers scientific data from space around Phobos. Um, well, we can do avionics at least. I mean, we've, well, well, we've got all these others. Okay, there we go. There's a new one. Atmospheric pressure. Transmit 27 signs too. Not bad. And that is the contract complete. It wasn't a very lucrative contract though. Okay, and the gravity scan is also a new one.
Analyze telemetry is not. Okay. Well, we're going to have to wait uh, for the decoupling, the staging, and uh, we'll just leave this around here. I, um, I half want to leave this also. I mean, I don't see what I'm going to do with it. We could set up sort of like a comm system around Phobos later, but let's just go with the lander this time. So I'm going to decouple that. I'm going to start unlocking the fuels here. Uh, we've got electric charge down here, and we've got electric charge in this probe core, so this section will not be having any problems like that. Okay, um, hold on, let's check. This is not suborbital, good, very important. So I go back quite a ways. I didn't want it to be suborbital or anything. So it'll hang out around Phobos for now. And then this, this is now on escape though, so let's, um, let's have some restraint here. Looks like the periapsis is negative, which is fine by me. Oh, um, okay, maybe this is not so, so fine by me. Let's see, I, I want to go smack into the surface, preferably on a side that's going to maintain communication. Okay, so um, which way are we going? If we're going this way, communication might not be great. Yeah, we're going that way. Um, okay, now we should land somewhere over here, and that's much better for facing the Earth and getting a signal out. We should be close or near. Let's. Well, okay. I should have done that earlier, though. Should have logged all this earlier. Okay, let's slow down here. 300 meters. Actually, I'd like to sort of hover over here while we try and get that near data. That's still. How long? Two minutes. Uh-oh, I'm running out of fuel here. I didn't even notice that. It's just using it all up, all over the place. Shoot. And here I thought I had enough to do a bunch of hops on Phobos, but no. Just trying to hover right now, basically, to get the science done. Okay, transmit that. Transmit that. There's going to be oodles of science here. And transmit. And even a new temperature scan. And it is bio-independent. Jeez, we could get all sorts of science from here. So I'm uh, queuing it up for when we land. Might as well. We have to sort of keep ourselves landed, if you will. Uh, no, no, no. That's the thing about these moons. It's going to be a little bit hard to keep them, keep anything that we land on them from floating off, walking away into orbit. Not quite walking, it'll be a jog, but still. I sure hope this is considered landed. Come on, just plant it, plant it, plant it. Maybe I should wait until... No, oh, that, 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 that did not help. Uh... Yeah, uh, to do all this I should really wait until the experiments are ready, right? Uh, that's four minutes away. Oh wait, uh, it settles when I do time warping. Okay, that's good. Uh, please let it be. Okay. Well, okay, that seems to be a surface thing. Yep, that's a surface thing too. Let's wait for it to upload. Okay, surface. 
Okay, this is all surface stuff. Good. Phobos' grooves. And we've fulfilled the contract. And we should have fulfilled the landing on Phobos' contract too. Yep, uncrewed Phobos landing. All good. A tremendous success and our backup mission, well, we'll uh, keep it around for some other purpose. Biological sample, only 15 signs. Jeez, you have to bring it back and everything. It takes a while to transmit it too. Okay, temperature scan. And atmospheric pressure scan. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it be. It's not got that much delta V left. Don't want to mess with it. Okay, it is here. We have a satellite in orbit around Phobos now. And yeah, let's see how the let, let's try and get the altimetry scan of Mars done. And maybe next time we'll try and land that at Mars. Uh, that should be done before the next probe comes in. All right, so we seem to have a curious situation. The bopper's fine. The bopper's still scanning. It's actually at 94% and 95%. It just didn't quite get done in time for me to turn to the alternate Phobos mission, the one that's no longer required. And it's probably a good thing that it's no longer required because it's nowhere near the orbit that I thought it would be. Um, we were we did a correction burn. It was there was a correction burn plotted, but uh, it didn't make much sense that correction burn, especially since currently we seem to be within. Hold on, the game's pause. Within the orbit of the Earth, not outside of it. It's like we're headed for Venus, not Phobos or Mars. Um, you, it's a tough to uh, see the orbit with all the other orbits here. Uh, we're, we're, we've been quite, quite busy here. Um, but you can see here, but uh, even with that periapsis, it doesn't touch the orbit of Venus, so we're not heading quite there yet. And uh, we're definitely not headed to Mars, so I don't know what happened to this. This is a curious sort of situation. Um, it might be a positive thing that we're not currently headed for Mars because well um, we could do something else with it like go to Venus um, let's see how much total Delta V there is and let's turn off smart ASS so it doesn't accidentally use it five thousand nine hundred and forty one it would seem it's not a huge amount but it's something Hmm. I think, I don't know, I'm just tempted to let it hang out for now. Let's go back to the Space Center and see what science we've done on Venus. Uh, the, the probe um, doesn't have parachutes, but it does have an engine. But I don't know how well that engine is going to work in the Venusian atmosphere being how thick it is. So I don't know if we could land it on... Venus safely yeah too bad Venus doesn't have a moon like Eve does otherwise that would be a shoe in okay well uh, the proper planets aren't really showing up here um, we've done an atmospheric pressure scan while in space high over Venus and near Venus Biological sample while in space near Venus. But not high over Venus, so we could do that one still. Doesn't look like we've done anything to do with um, magnetometer or anything. And we've got magnetometer and uh, radio plasma wave detector as well, so... Maybe, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do about sending it to Venus. Well, according to Mechjeb, the Holman transfer is in a year and 212 days, which is a little bit weird because you'd figure that uh, given our orbit is within the orbit of the Earth, 
It wouldn't take that long to phase with Venus, even in the worst case. But, uh, alright, well, uh, that's what Mechjeb says. It takes a thousand to do the initial transfer burn, and then we need to do another 1,500 to match, uh, to do the mid-course uh, plane change to match planes with Venus. So that's 2,500 total, which leaves us basically in total with uh, more than 2,000 left. Uh, we may be able to make orbit with that, we may not be able to. The key is to pass by close enough to do some science. So we'll just schedule this. I, I still don't know why we had the problem in the first place that this wasn't headed to Mars. Uh, maybe I just forgot something from a previous episode. That happens. Happens all the time. Um, we could time warp uh, around here and just wait for the scanner to finish, I think. Oh. Ooh, it's doing some funny stuff here. Oh, there we go. Low resolution scan of Mars is finished, so now all we have to do is land the bopper. So that'll be the first thing I do in the next episode. And yeah, that should be interesting. After that, we can turn to this Jupiter Orbiter 2, which hopefully is still in the correct orbit. And then uh, we will have to deal with the crew duration record of 60 days. I have no idea whether it's been counting days so far or whether we're just going to have to time warp for 60 days, but we don't have anything else to do on our calendar after the Jupiter Orbiter 2 mission, so that should be fine. Okay, so we fulfilled quite a few contracts in this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.